do that right now. Wonderful. Good. All right, everyone. I want to introduce my friend Beth Ruffin. We went to high school together and we connected a few weeks ago um, personally over the phone and um, I had asked her if she was willing to speak for our team and this opportunity popped up for the virtual retreat and she was on it and um, I am just so moved by her by her energy and her inspiration and um, I'm so excited for you guys to hear her because she is fantastic and um, and has so much knowledge to share with us so um, Beth take it away Thank you. And Leslie, I'm going to take you with me to all of my speaking gigs. You can like introduce. All right. Yeah. Oh, really good. I appreciate that. You up. Um, so, hi, everyone. Um, like Leslie said, I'm Beth Ruffin. And actually, as of tomorrow, I will be, I will have been in full time business for myself for a year. So, yes, yeah, so exciting. Um, so, I was in the insurance industry for 20 years. Uh, before I decided to step out on my own. And so the work that I do um, is really, I'll, I'll kind of put it in a nutshell, I want to make our world more inclusive through consulting, coaching, and speaking. I want to see more women who are just kicking ass. Can I cuss? Okay. I want to see more women who are just like kicking ass whether it be whether they stay within a career or whether they are business owners. Um, and so thank you for this opportunity to come. I am a mom of one preteen. So for those of you who pray, please keep me in your prayers because preteens are not easy. Um, I also love making new friends. So we are all best friends now. So please connect with me. Um, you can find me anywhere on social media at the Beth Ruffin. But um, so I'm going to start with a little story about my daughter. My daughter, her name is Isabella. She's 11. And um, she has always been extremely smart, you know, for the time she was young. You know how we all, all of us with kids, right? Like our kids are the smartest person in the room, right? So Isabella definitely was always the smartest person in the room. And she, you know, always got A's and was getting all these awards. And so the summer of, I think it was the summer before her third grade year, we got a letter that she was accepted into the gifted and talented program and we were so excited you know we're telling everybody so she goes back to school that august and she tells her friends she got into the gifted and talented program and one girl said oh well that must have been a mistake because you're not that smart and it totally deflated her all of the confidence that she had all of the excitement that she had was gone. And so she came home and she said, yeah, you know, maybe they did make a mistake. I I'm not that smart. Now, of course, as her mother, I'm like, right, I'm terribly upset. But I had to approach it with her and I said, okay, let's look at the evidence here. So what grades have you gotten? She's like A's. I'm like, okay. Remember last year when they had the math B? Who won that? She's like me. I'm like, okay, so we're going through all of the evidence, right? And I, this happens a lot with us as women, right? Where we're feeling good about ourselves, we're feeling great, we have excitement, we have confidence, and then someone says something or does something and that balloon totally deflates. Who, right? I do that, has anyone done that? Okay, I'm just looking through. All right, so we're, we've all kind of been there, right? Um, and so what I had to tell Isabella was, you belong there. You belong here, right? And it's so funny because Leslie told me that was the theme of your conference last year. And when I said I wanted to talk about you belong here, I just said, well, then this was the message I was meant to get because <laughs> it just fits. Um, but that's what we're going to talk about today is that you belong here, right? So we're going to talk about why you belong here. We're going to talk about how can you help coach yourself, right? Um, and so let's get started. So the first reason why you belong here is because you are here. And I know this may sound kind of simple, but I'm a really huge advocate of purpose. And I believe that everyone was created with a purpose, on purpose, right? And so you wouldn't be here if you did not have a purpose to fulfill in this world. 
there is something that you are meant to do. There are gifts that you have. There are skills that you have. There are experiences that you've had. And all of that, all of those things fit into who you are and what you're supposed to do. So I'll give you an example. I don't know if you saw um, my bio, but um, I talk about this. Um, I don't know if there are any children listening, but so I'll just quick trigger uh, warning. When I was 17, um, I lost my virginity through sexual assault. And for years, for probably 20 years, I blamed myself. It totally ruined the relationships that I had, right, with men. Like it just, it changed who I was as a person. Um, but I finally started talking about it with other women and they said, wow, I've had some of these same thoughts. I've had this experience. Like, I can't believe that, you know, cause I had to realize that it wasn't my fault, right? I had to realize that um, the, the shame isn't mine. The shame was his, you know? And so I actually wrote a book about it and it's called Get Up. And it just talks about how, yeah, we, we get pushed down, we fall down, but we can always get up. So, that situation I went through was horrible. I would not wish that on anyone. But how did it lend to my purpose? Now I can encourage other women, right? Now I can help other women who maybe have experienced something horrible and help them get up, right? So that's going to kind of lend into my second one is that someone's life depends on you. You're here to make an impact. And, and that you're, you're not here to sell products, right? Your products are amazing. I've tried them, right? Um, your products are amazing. We know that. Let's put that to the side. But you're not here to sell products. You're here to change lives. And with you, right? Someone's life literally could depend on you. Someone's encounter with you could change their life. It could extend their life. It could give them a better quality of life. So when you think about what you do and why you're here and why you belong here, it's because you are here to make an impact. The products are secondary. And I don't know how, you know, your corporate headquarters would feel about me saying that, right? But the impact is primary. The impact is primary. The tools that you have, the products, the training, right? Those are your tools. But the, your impact is primary. People need you. And then the third thing I want to say is that your story matters. So kind of going back to my story, you know, we go through these things in life some good and some bad and we and we wonder well why did that have to happen to me or why do i have to be the one that has to you know there's um who's heard that saying you know what doesn't kill you makes you stronger we've all heard that there's this meme that i posted a few weeks ago and it was like i'm tired of those things <laughs> that, that, that don't kill me make, make me stronger like i'm over it i don't want to do that anymore but um, it's true. It's like, you know, the things that you go through, oftentimes it's not for you. Oftentimes it's for someone else. Your experiences, your stories, your challenges are to help other people. Is this resonating with y'all? So let's talk about, so I know that one of the things you all talk about a lot is that you are the coach of one, right? And so how can you coach yourself? Um, so the first thing I want to talk about is removing negative thoughts. And I know we don't have time to kind of go through all of the negative thoughts we tend to have. So I'm just going to focus on one, which is imposter syndrome. All right, yeah, yeah. 
imposter is pretty big, right? So imposter syndrome is the syndrome where you feel like any success you've had is because of luck or because you're a part of a group, right? Um, it's where you have a hard time accepting that you're awesome. Give me a, let me see a raised hand if anybody deals with imposter syndrome. You have a hard time accepting you're awesome and you feel like at any moment, they're gonna figure out that you're a fraud. Okay. Now for those of you who don't struggle with this, like I need you to coach me, right? Cause it's, <laughs> um, you know, same thing like the story with my daughter, right? Like she has all these accomplishments and then someone says you don't belong and she's like, oh, you're right, right? So imposter syndrome is real. Um, and it usually affects people who are high performing and high potential. It usually affects like awesome women. So it really, it's kind of weird, right? But so with imposter syndrome, you have a heart. Yeah, every damn day, me too, Pam. And I have to tell myself every day. Um, right, you had that hard time being able to say, this is why I'm successful is because of me. So how do you remove imposter syndrome? The first thing is you have to stop comparing, comparing yourself to others. That's hard, but that's what you have to do. Um, and social media doesn't make it easy, right? Social media will have you thinking that everybody else's world is perfect, right? They have the perfect husband, they have the perfect kids, their home is always clean, right? Um, they work out five times a day, right? They drink 55 gallons of water, like they will have you thinking that they are perfect and then you're looking at yourself like, what am I doing wrong? Okay, but you have to stop that comparison game because the truth of the matter is number one, Nobody is 100% real on social media. They're showing you what they want you to see. And number two, remember we talked about your story. That's your story. That's your situation, right? You have a different gift. You have a different skill set, perspective, and experience. You know, especially like in an industry with yours, where you are all, like you're all in a group, you're all trying to do the same things, right? how can you not compare yourself with your sister next to you? Well, you have to remember what is your unique, what do you bring that's unique? You know, in marketing, we talk about the unique selling proposition, right? So what about you is, I call it your secret sauce. What's the secret sauce that you bring? What makes you different than everybody else? Um, for me, like I'm, so I'm a coach. I'm like a, a business coach, right? There's, there's probably a million business coaches in the United States right now, but I focus on badass women who want to change the world. So that's how I'm different. So then when I'm looking at other coaches, they're not doing what I do, right? So you've got to stop that comparison game. The next thing you have to learn is it's okay to make mistakes. Um, perfectionism, anybody, anybody? Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. It used to take me in, in college. It, I, I would not turn in a paper until like the minute before it was due because I was spending so much time making sure that it was perfect. Right. But what we have to realize is perfection is false. There's no such thing as perfect. There's no such thing as perfect. So you're gonna make mistakes, you're gonna mess up, you're not gonna get it right. But that's okay as long as you learn from it, right? So you make a mistake or you mess up or something doesn't go right, that's okay, what did I learn from it and how can I move on from this? The next thing is you've gotta stop overthinking Stop overthinking. It's so funny because I'll like, I'll hop upon someone or happen upon someone on social media, maybe from high school. And I'll be thinking about that one weird sentence I said to them in ninth grade. <laughs> I'm like, they probably think I'm a weirdo. And I'm sure that they haven't, they didn't remember that at all, right? I overthink everything. But, and here's how you can get over that. 
move from being problem focused to solution focused. Okay, if you're going to obsess about something, I want you to obsess about solutions and not the problems. So what I do, I have notebooks all over the house or I'll use like the note function on my phone. Um, so whenever I like am thinking about a problem, I'm like, okay, what are the solutions? I just write those down and then it helps me get that out my mind so I can move on to the next thing. But what happens is sometimes we get caught up in that cycle of analysis paralysis where we're like, oh, what could I have done better? Or how am I going to get over this? And you focus on the problem and then the problem becomes magnified and now you have this huge problem hanging over your head and you're stuck. So you've got to focus on solutions. And that's what you all do for your customers, right? You, are, you bring solutions to them. So I want you to now say, okay, now I need to do that for myself. I need to be solution focused for myself. And then the last thing I'll say is um, affirmations. I am a huge, huge proponent of affirmations. And I'll tell you how I write them. I write them as if they've already happened. So I look at who I want to be in the future. And I write down affirmations. So one of my affirmations is I will, I inspire millions with my words. Like I want to be on a stage in an arena inspiring women, right? Now, right now I probably inspire hundreds, maybe a hundred, maybe tens, right? But I write that affirmation as if it's already happened. And every morning I get up in my journal and I write that affirmation down, right? So every morning I get up and I write, I inspire millions with my words and I repeat it out. I got this from, um, oh, I can't remember her name, the woman who wrote Girl, Wash Your Face. If y'all read that, yeah, I can't remember her name right now. But, um, and so, but what it does is, yep, Rachel Hollis, yes, love her. What it does is it gets my mind thinking like someone who inspires millions with her words. What does a woman like that think? How does a woman like that act? How does she carry herself? Does she get caught up on other people? Do you think Oprah cares about other people? Mm -mm. So when you write that affirmation, you can now start walking as that person. You start conducting yourself as that person. It also helps me know when to say yes or no. So if someone says, hey, Beth, I want you to come help me, you know, I want you to come do X, Y, Z. Okay, does that fit? Is that something that a woman who inspires millions would do? If it's yes, then that's really easy for me to say, okay, yes. And if not, then I can say, I'm sorry, you know, thank you for thinking of me, but this doesn't fit into my mission. So imposter syndrome, you want to stop comparing yourself to others. Know that it's okay to make mistakes move from being problem focused to solution focused. And I would really encourage you to start with, even if it's just one affirmation, write, as, write it as if it's already happened. And every morning you get up, you write it down and you repeat it to yourself. So let's talk a little bit about um, remembering your why. If you all can in the chat, tell me why did you join this organization? To prove I can do hard things and inspire others to do the same. Oh, I love that. Yes. I love that. Redefine my balance as a mom, teacher, and person, and want to share it with others. I love that. To help other moms struggling to take care of themselves. I love that. Commit to something and do it. Yes. 
for me and only me. Yes, I love that. And, and you know that there's um, brain science will say that once you commit to something and finish it, right, that it makes then you can, it makes you reaching other goals more possible. Because what happens is your brain believes what you tell it. And oftentimes when we tell our brain we're going to do something and we don't do it, our brain stops believing us stops believing us. So yes, doing it and finishing it will, will retrain your brain. I love that. Okay. Let's see. To find me again for me and my family. Yes. Pam wouldn't stop inviting me. <laughs> I like that. Help other women who didn't think they had time to do things for themselves. Yes. Inspire others to be happy and healthy. Help moms be, yes, be healthy, fit, and confident. You want to be healthier, but now it's for your, yeah, for your kids, but now it's for you. Love that. Motivation to motivate others to make life changes. Love that. I love, these are great whys. These are awesome whys. Now, how often do you remind yourself of your why? You don't have to write that, but that's just a question I want you to think of. Do you have your why written, written down where you can see it? Right? Like, get you a, a three by five note card, write it down write it in lipstick on your mirror, like put it, put it somewhere. Because when things get hard, your why is what gets you through. Right? When, when you go a week, and I know this because I'm in full time entrepreneurship, right? When you go a week, and you haven't had any deposits into your checking account, you know what keeps you going through? Your why. Your why is stronger than anything else. So you got to remember that. Don't forget it. Keep it where you can see it. Bring yourself back to it. Your why can also, and this is probably part two of our conversation, but your why can also help you make sales. Right? Your why is really important. Um, the next thing is accountability, and you all have accountability with each other, but how do you hold yourself accountable? If you're like me, you like, I love lists. Like every day I write a list. These are all the things I'm going to get done. And um, then at the end of the day, like the list is still there, <laughs> right? But how am I keeping myself accountable for the things that I wanna do? What's my reward system? Um, here's what I do. Each week, I do a weekly check-in with myself. And I write down what went well this week, what didn't go well this week, and then what am I going to do next week to improve? And so that does a few things. First, you celebrate your wins. Next, you're conscious of... The next thing is you're conscious of those things that could be improved. And then you make a plan for next week to be successful. So it's, it's three quick questions. What went well, excuse me, this week? What didn't go well? And then what will I do next week to improve? That's how I help keep accountability with myself. So we're almost out of time, but I want to I want to recap, and then I just if anybody has any questions or comments, um, I'd love to open up the floor for that. So somebody help me out. What's the first reason why you belong here? Can we all? Huh? Oh, I couldn't unmute. Oh yeah. <laughs> What's the first reason you belong here? You remember? You are here because you are here. That's right. What's the second reason you belong here? You have a purpose? No, someone's life depends on you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, but, oh, I wrote well, that could go with it. That could go thing. with it. <laughs> Your purpose. And then what's the third one? Okay. Impact, I think Teresa. Yeah, impact. Your story matters. Story matters. Your story matters, yeah. And you've got to believe that. You've got to believe that, that you are valuable, that you are worthy, that you are enough just as you are. 
a card? Supposed to be a card? You've got to believe that for yourself. Uh, because okay. other people aren't going to believe that if you don't believe that about yourself, right? If you don't believe that you're enough, other people aren't going to believe that. So we have four, in four minutes we have left. Um, any questions or any comments? Um, maybe if I love hearing from people, if you want to, if you want to talk or use the chat, I love hearing from people. Maybe what's one thing that you're going to do after this conversation we've had? Just one? Oh. We have pages of notes. I, I can't. Someone I else go first. I have to process. Okay. <laughs> it's, I'll say something. This is something kind of superficial, but at my Target, I noticed they have Rachel Hollis's journal, her Start Today journal, where she has the affirmations. And I keep looking at it every time I'm there. And I just wrote down that I'm going to go buy it. Because I keep starting affirmation journals and, do, and then not doing anything. But I think if I get that and just to find a place to just house those thoughts. And, and that's simple, Love but that. it's the one step that I... I waver in and out of so that's what i'm gonna do <laughs> and it can, like speaking to you when you walk past it so exactly it. it's just like that's what this is for this yeah. i'll just throw it in my regular notebook and then it just kind of fizzles out so yeah. yeah i love that anyone else i'd have to say to really believe in yourself and not let other people like deflate you like you said like there's so many times where you could be like on this high and thinking like everything is going well and one person does one thing and it's just like completely shut you down and it's just so important to stay centered and believe in what you do who you are and just keep going yes absolutely i love that thank you i'll share mine um i think one thing i always want i try to always remind me and you remind me of today was that we are here and we can potentially save someone's life and um you know, it's really easy in any business to get wrapped up in business projections and goals and, you know, income and all those things, which are our livelihood and a part of it. But I've received, you know, countless messages over the past five, six years of people saying like, you honestly, you saved me. Um, and that's what it's all about. And keeping that as a focus to move forward every single day with doing these business activities and making sure we're showing up and it's just a really great reminder. So it's, it's so true. It makes me think of people that I may have been afraid to reach out to in the past that, you know, somebody else's life or extending their life can depend on what we have to offer and the help that we can give. And that should be the motivation behind reaching out every single day and, you know, picking up my phone and calling people and it was a good reminder. So thank you. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing to um, our story, really focusing on honing in on pieces of our story that can resonate with people so that that can then turn into why we're doing this every day. And I'm definitely writing things all over my mirrors when we get off this. Yeah. <laughs> it's the one place you look every day. Yes, that's so true. I wrote a note for myself, Leslie, that I need to write my why, but tape it to my computer screen. Yes. So. Um, and then I really like the three questions for reflection. Yeah. Um, I'm adding that to our Saturday and Sunday morning routine, Teresa. Um, like I always have like a routine on the weekends that I do in the morning and that's going on it. So. I love that. And Jessica said, I need a mirror in the workout room to do a daily quote. Yeah, that's really good. That's really good. Awesome. I love it. That was one of the things I loved about transform 20 is when he'd have the, like the, message of the day that was awesome and it does start your day because we all most of us start our day with a workout so getting that in that routine would be good how do you do that now that's what i need to learn <laughs> i'll come back to another meeting and you will tell me how do you get up and work out like <laughs> we do this we zoom together and it makes a huge difference when you're not doing it by yourself that's true that's yeah. true that's awesome and then if you don't show up to the zoom you get a text like are you coming are you still in bed so <laughs> That'll do it. That will do it. <laughs> well, thank you all so much for having me. Leslie, again, thank you for uh, recommending me to come. And again, you know, please connect with me on social media. I'd love to continue this conversation with you all. And um, I'll, I'll commit to 
working out one morning this week. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Love it. <laughs> We're going to blast your information everywhere, and um, we hope that you will return with us because this was amazing. Yeah. I was crying a lot of that. It just felt like it oh. in the gut. So thank you. <laughs> thank you guys so much. Thank you. I right. appreciate it. Thank you, Beth. Okay. Bye bye. Guys, can someone, Leslie, what's Beth's Instagram? At the Beth Ruffin, she said. I'll type it in the chat. That's her website, too, thebethruffin.com. Oh, awesome. I'm going to stop recording.